Let's take a look at the basic concept of time value of money. Time value of money refers to the notion that it's better to receive money sooner than later. If you have money today, you can invest it and you can earn a positive return, some sort of interest. As I'm making this video, interest rates are quite low, but traditionally they've been much higher and being able to invest your money and earn some interest means that money today is worth more than money in the future. So a dollar today is worth more than a dollar that you have to wait for. The reason we care about time value of money, the concept of finding the value today or the value in the future, is because money or cash flows are oftentimes received in different time periods. If you think about it, if you started a business, you wouldn't expect to receive all of your money on the day you bought the business. You might buy a barber shop and you expect to receive cash flows over the next 20 or 30 years. If you happen to buy a piece of machinery for your business, you happen to be a landscaper and you buy a new truck, or you happen to buy um, new lawn mowers for your landscaping business, you expect that to earn you a return but over a number of periods. You don't expect to buy that, that uh, lawn mower and, and receive all the cash flows today. You expect to receive them over the life of that lawn mower. So it may be several years, but you're going to be making money because now you can go out and cut people's lawns. So it's important to be able to figure out what the money is worth in different time periods so that we can figure out what it's actually worth to us today. Okay, and here are some examples. Again, a piece of machinery will deliver cash flows for several years. If you win the lottery and you don't take the fixed payout, okay, you don't get the lump sum today, you're getting a stream of payments over a number of years. Well, if you're getting $50,000 a year for 20 years, if you multiply that out, it adds up to a million, but it's not really a million dollars. If you had a million dollars today and you put it in the bank and earned a little bit of interest, you could actually take out more than $50,000 a year for 20 years. So that, that lottery ticket, which pays $50,000 a year for 20 years, isn't actually worth a million dollars in today's dollars. Okay? A retiree is going to receive a pension for the years that he or she is in retirement. What's that worth to us today? I mean, if you expect to live for 40 years after you retire and you're going to receive $35,000 a year, what's that worth to us today? Well, by using the concept of time value of money, we'll be able to do those calculations. There are two basic concepts. In the concept, in compounding, we're looking at what an amount of money now will be worth in the future. In discounting, we're looking for the value now of some future amount. So let's take a look at an example here. We happen to have some cash flows, $3,000 one year from now, $5,000 two years from now, $4,000 three years from now, $3,000 four years from now, and $2,000 five years from now. And you see this year zero cash flow is negative. We're going to pay $15,000 to receive this stream of payments. And if you add up the stream of payments, it turns out that this is $17,000, I believe. Let's see, eight, 10, 17,000, okay? So your first thought is, well, I'm paying 15,000, I'm getting $17,000 back. Isn't that a good deal? Well, not necessarily. Because again, you're putting up the money now but you're receiving this, these cash flows later. So we really need to figure out how to either bring all of these cash flows back to time period zero, discounting, to figure out whether it's a good deal, or bring all the cash flows out to the future, at, which we call compounding, and figuring out whether it's a good deal or not. And basically, we're going to try and figure out if this stream of cash flows gives us more than $15,000 in today's dollars. That is, if we discounted all of these back, we're going to figure out 
whether it's a good deal or not. If it's more than 15,000, that's a good deal. If it's less than 15,000, it's a bad deal. Let's take a look at a little picture here. So here's, here's, here are those numbers, but in a graphical form. You can see that if we brought all the numbers back, we call that discounting, and we're finding what we call the present value. If we took all these numbers out into the future, we'd be finding what we call the future value, and we'd be doing something called compounding. And these are both very useful tools. Okay? For example, you may want to figure out how much money this project is taking in, in today's dollars, and compare it to the cost that you're paying right now to determine whether it's a good project or not, or a good investment. On the other hand, you may want to figure out how much money you'll have saved when you retire. So you may be saving $3,000 one year, $5,000 another, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll want to know in 30 years how much that money will be worth. We want to find the future value in that case. So what are the different types of calculations we can do? We can find the future and the present values of one lump sum, or one cash flow, which we call lump sum. We can find the future value or the present value of a mixed stream of, and by a mixed stream we mean a stream of different cash flows that may occur at different intervals. The example I gave before, that was a mixed stream. They weren't all the same numbers every year. We can find the future and the present value of annuities. Annuities are equal cash flows made at equal intervals. And we might also like to find the present value of a perpetuity, which is a fixed cash flow received forever. There are some bonds that you might purchase that will pay you a fixed amount forever. And these can be sort of useful calculations. Now, what are some of the applications once we learn these tools? Uh, we can use them for valuing stocks and bonds. We can use them for valuing investment projects, such as should we buy that piece of land? Should we invest in that piece of equipment? We can figure out loan repayments. So if you are buying a car and the car costs $20,000 and the interest rate is 4%, what's your monthly car payment going to be? We can also figure out what your mortgage payment is going to be. So you buy a $300,000 house, the interest rate is 5%. What's your monthly mortgage payment going to be? We can use these tools to figure out how much to save for retirement or how much do we have to save to fund a child's education. We can also do calculations such as finding the length of time it takes a certain amount of money to grow to some desired amount. So maybe you want to have $100,000 in the bank, you put $25,000 in the bank now and no other money. If you're earning 6%, how long will it take before it grows to $100,000? Okay. We may also be interested in how to compute the return that is earned on an investment. And all of these calculations I'll do in future videos and I'll do them separately one at a time. So I'll show you how to calculate the future value of a lump sum, the present value of a lump sum, the present value of an annuity, the future value of an annuity, etc., etc. cetera. 